Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today in this video, I'll explain what is mediator design pattern. Where to use mediator design pattern in a project. I'll also show the Java code implementation of mediator design pattern. At the end, we will discuss the benefits of mediator design pattern. So stay tuned till end of the video. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about behavioral design pattern. Can you explain what is behavioral design pattern? Can you name some of the behavioral design pattern that we learned in previous video? Please reply your answer in the comment section. If you have not seen the previous video, I highly recommend you to go and see that video. The link of the previous video is shared on the screen and also provided in the description section. Just to recall the behavioral design pattern, the behavioral design pattern focus on the interaction between the objects. For more information, please go and see the previous video. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I want you to subscribe my channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I'm not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. Okay, friends. Now let's start with the mediator design pattern. Mediator design pattern is one of the important and widely used behavioral design pattern. Mediator enables the decoupling of the objects by introducing a middle layer in between so that interaction between objects happens via middle layer. If objects interact with each other directly, the system components become tightly coupled. That adds to higher maintainability cost and difficult to extend. Mediator pattern focuses on providing a mediator between the objects for communication and help in implementing loose coupling between the objects. In mediator design pattern, objects no longer communicate directly with each other. Many times in project, the communication between components are complex. Due to this, the logic between the components become very complex. Mediator pattern helps the object to communicate in a dissociated manner, which leads to minimize the complexity. Friends, now let's understand mediator design pattern with a real world example. Let's take an example of air traffic controller. Air traffic controller is a great example of mediator pattern where airport control room works as a mediator for communication between the different flights. Mediator work as a router between the objects and it can have its own logic to provide way of communication. Pilots of aircraft that are approaching or departing the airport don't communicate directly with each other. Instead, they speak to an air traffic controller and here air traffic controller don't need to control the whole flight but just to enforce constraints in the terminal area. Friends, I have prepared a code snippet for the mediator design pattern. After the code walkthrough, I'll run the code and give you the demo of mediator design pattern. Friends, I've shared this project in my GitHub repository. You can download the code and play with it. You can see the GitHub repository link on your screen and also the link is provided in the description section of this video. So now, let me show you the mediator design pattern implementation in Java code. I'm using Java 8 with IntelliJ IDE. Okay friends, now let me show you how I have implemented mediator design pattern. So I have a project and in that project I have created a package behavior and inside behavior I have a package mediator. All my mediator design pattern classes are inside this package. So what I have is I have a interface command. So in this demo, I'm taking an example of air traffic controller where air traffic controller controls all arrival and departure of all the flights. So if you see, I have defined one interface command and it has method land and implementation of this interface is in the flight. If you see, 
I have a flight class where it is implementing that command interface. Now in this flight class, I have few attributes like flight number, and then I have an instance of mediator class, mediator interface that we'll see just after this. Then I have defined a constructor where I'm initializing the flight number and mediator. And here is the implementation of that method. The flight is checking with the mediator if the landing is okay, then it is successfully landing the flight. And it's updating the landing status to true. If mediator says if landing is not okay, then it is printing waiting for the landing. And we have another method get ready where it just prints getting ready for the landing. Same way we have another class runway that also implements the command. Here I have a runway number attribute and again I have an instance of mediator class. I'm initializing these values through a constructor here. And I am setting that landing status to true at mediator. Now in landing method that I'm implementing from the interface, I'm saying landing permission granted on this runway number. And then I'm setting the value in the mediator landing status to true. Let us see another interface that we have is ITC mediator. In this mediator interface, I'm having few methods that is register a runway, register a flight, is landing OK? and set landing status so our flights and runway will interact with this mediator on all these methods you know here the interacting component inter interacting objects are runway and flights flights wants to know that what and which runway i can use for landing so the mediator atc mediator helps in that let us see implementation of this interface in ATC mediator class, we are implementing that interface. We have few attributes like landing, it is of type Boolean, then flight and runway, instance of flight and runway. Here in register of runway, we are passing runway and we are initializing the runway. Register flight, we are passing the flight and initializing the flight. And then we are checking is landing okay to returning our boolean landing status and in this method of setting the landing status we are setting the status whatever is passed in this method now let's see how to test this <laughs> application so i've written a test class i am creating an instance of atc mediator class now i am initializing one flight where indigo 1001 is the flight number and I'm passing this ATC mediator instance to it then I am also initializing one main runway and the runway number is one and also passing the same mediator here now what ATC mediator will do is it is registering the flight then ATC mediator is registering a runway and this flight is now getting ready for the landing now main runway is also getting ready for the landing and here indigo flight is landed successfully we will run this and we'll see the response let me run this now yeah so it says indigo flight ready for landing landing permission granted by runway one at this level and then successfully landed flight this indigo 1001 at this line when we are registering the flight and runway through mediator mediator is coordinating between these two component and helping the flight to land on a specific runway friends now let's understand where to use mediator design pattern mediator design pattern can be used when a set of objects communicate in a complex way and resulting in dependencies the mediator pattern can be used where unable to reuse an object 
because the objects has many interdependencies. The mediator pattern can be used to boost the security in a scenario when communication between the parties should not know each other and mediator will help them communicate and coordinate. Friends, now let's understand the benefits of mediator design pattern. This pattern reduces the subclassing because mediator localizes the behavior. Hence, changing some behavior requires subclassing only the mediator class. Components become decoupled here, which allow us to vary and reuse these components and mediator classes independently. Also, this adds an additional layer of security so that components do not know each other. <laughs> Friends, let me quickly summarize what we learned in this video. We understood what is mediator design pattern. We saw the use cases of mediator design pattern. We also saw how to implement mediator design pattern in our Java. And we discuss the benefits of mediator design pattern. At the end, we also understood why the mediator design pattern are so useful in our projects. Friends, let me know if you have already used mediator design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be useful. Please reply your answer in the comment section of this video. Friends, in the next video, we will cover Memento design pattern. We will learn what is Memento design pattern, what is the usage of Memento design pattern, and we will also see a Java code implementation of Memento design pattern. We will understand the benefits of Memento design pattern, so stay tuned for the next video. And if you are new to the channel, so please subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Friends, I request you to subscribe this channel for the latest programming and technology related video. I am putting a lot of effort in creating these videos. So please help me in growing our channel Code One Digest. If you like the video, so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos. Click on the bell icon for the latest video notification so that you don't miss out any of our video. Don't forget to share this video with all your friends because this is very useful information for students, beginners and software engineers. Thank you.